um, hello everyone and um, welcome to another episode of Designing Cities for All, uh, Bakhuis de Zwijger's two-year-long research and activity program in which we take a deep dive <laughs> in designing, we take a deep dive in designing products, places and systems for all. And um, in today's special um, Designing Cities for All book talk, we are going to talk about uh, Roots Guide. We will officially launch Roots Guide. Uh, my name is Matthijs. Yeah. Yes, we, we can have some applause for that. Why not? That's celebrated, right? So, um, uh, my name is Matthijs van der Sande Bakhuizen. Uh, that's a great name for all the non Dutch speakers to <laughs> practice on. Um, I don't know, I, I didn't choose it. Uh, I'm an actor, I'm a musician, and this is actually the first time I'll be uh, moderating an event like this. Um, so uh, bear with me and uh, forgive me if I make stupid jokes that are out of place. I'm just very insecure right now. No, I'm just <laughs> that was the first joke. Um, so um, this is uh, kind of special to me since, um, uh, uh, well, I'm very honored. I was, I was being asked by uh, Daniel and Ingi, two of the co-creators of this book, um, to do this uh, since they are family members of mine. Uh, and I've been on the sideline of their... Um, their process for quite a while, uh, always keeping a small eye on them. And um, well, I'm just really um, uh, 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 proud is also a word, but also I'm, um, what they did amongst the other co-creators, of course, and all the guides in the book, uh, creating this book we are going to discuss tonight is, uh, is uh, well, it's a, it's a work of art. I, I really, um, uh, I strongly feel that we we arrived at a point in time where uh, we, or of course I can speak for all of you people, so I'm going to say I, I am really uh, yearning for the message that this book wants to convey. So, um, but we'll come to that. Uh, now I lost everything. <laughs> um, so, why are we here? Um, it's for this book, for Roots Guide. Uh, in 2016, amidst growing polarization regarding migration in the Netherlands and other parts of Europe, the Roots Guide project came to life. This brought together storytelling facilitator Ingi Mehus. I'm sorry if I don't pronounce your, all your names correctly. I'm, I, I studied on this, but uh, a documentary photographer, uh, Rehab El Dalil, evolutionary biologist Dan Verpel, associate professor in cultural geography Megan Ormond, and graphic designer Hamza Kashash. And the mixture of difficult titles and names is just entirely made up to bully me, right? Uh, no, um, so they came together and thought, how can we display the true diversity that shapes the Netherlands? And um, that's what we are going to find out tonight at the presentation or uh, official launch of Roots Guide. Um, so first, I would like to do a collective warm up. Um, yes, this is going to be genuine audience participation. Um, it means the fun part is over already. Um, <laughs> the terror is starting. And, and I would like to, because we all want to be present here, um, let's switch off our phones so we won't be bothered by them. Um, and um, I'll just give you a second. Of course, it takes time. So thank you for that already. And um, uh, now it's, it's, it's a small warm up to get into the purport of this evening. So I would like you uh, to raise your hand. It's going to be a small game. Uh, so raise your hand if English isn't your first language. So I'm going to have to confess to that already. <coughs> That's a lot of people. Um, raise your hand if you identify as a migrant, whatever that may mean to you. Raise your hand if you've ever felt misunderstood. <laughs> raise your hand if you love to travel both near and far. <laughs> and um, last one, very important. Raise your hand if you're ready to go on this Roots Guide journey with us. 
Yes. So that's everyone. No, you didn't do it. What? What's wrong with you? No. Um, so uh, um, now I, 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 I really, I'm really curious to talk with the, the core members, the, the creators of, uh, of the book. Uh, so give them a, a warm applause. Um, Ingi Mehus, uh, come to stage. I'm sorry. <laughs> Ingi Mehus, Daniel Verpel, <laughs> Megan Ormond, um, Hamza Kashash. I've been told he's more comfortable. He's sitting right there. He's also here, but he's more comfortable over there. So <laughs> let's, let's, let's give him a hand. And um, uh, I think Rehab El Dalil is on Zoom. Zoom? Is that correct? Or she should be. Hmm. This is exciting. Well, we can start already. Um, so, um, yeah, I'm just, I'm just very curious about the whole process of making the book. Um, the, well, I think we can call it a work of art since it's been, I mean, ah, ah, hello, <laughs> hello, Rechab. Hello. Thank you for pronouncing my name correctly. Oh, I, 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 thank you. I, you did a good job. I tried my best. <laughs> um, <laughs> So, um, um, uh, yeah, uh, great. I'm going to try to uh, shift my focus uh, in a good way. Uh, to, uh, so, I, so the first, uh, first question is, um, it took you five years to make this book. Well, it's not a question. It's, I, I know this. Um, so that's a, wow, that's a long time. Um, yeah, I'm just very curious, um, what is Root's Guide? Uh, and 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 what was the like the the driving force of creating it? The wh why was it created, uh, Megan? Yeah. So as as you mentioned earlier, Matthijs, uh, we noticed that there was a growing polarization mm. with regard to uh, migration issues within the Netherlands, and there are a lot of initiatives that have started to emerge in the last several years that have sought to uh, create a greater understanding. Uh, about migration in the country. Um, and oftentimes these are uh, collections of stories um, in order to foster greater empathy with people uh, with migration backgrounds, uh, but also greater awareness, of course, of the fact that migration is everywhere uh, around us and is part of our lives. Mm. And yet these stories are not always read. And so we thought, how are we, going to, how are we going to make it such that we can bring stories into the lives of people and make them relevant to everyday folks? Mm -hmm. And uh, we thought, well, hey, everybody likes to travel, right? Everybody had their hand up earlier. Everybody likes to travel. So, well, why don't we just create a guidebook of the Netherlands? Mm -hmm. And that's precisely what we've done. So we've taken uh, this sort of tool, this, this thing that we're all familiar with using, a guidebook, and we've uh, twisted it. We made it an atypical guidebook so that we can see this country in which we're all living uh, through the eyes of people with migration backgrounds, but diverse migration backgrounds, all different kinds of migration, um, in, in order to really begin to understand that uh, we are all, regardless of where we've been born, uh, we are all living here and we all have the authority to speak about uh, the places in which we live as locals. Mm. Yeah. yeah. Because it, it's it's... I mean, it's much more uh, uh, profound than a typical guidebook. Uh, it's it's much more Dutch than a than a typical your your average guidebook, mm -hmm. because you only read stuff about uh, windmills and clogs and stuff <laughs> like that. And 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 this actually has places that that I don't know about, and 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 that makes me curious about my own country through the eyes of well uh, 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 people, mm -hmm. and um, so. Yes, I, I, I really agree with that, yeah. <laughs> I mean, cool. know, the fact is, is that one out of every four people in the Netherlands has a first or second generation migration background. Yeah. And the places that are meaningful to us are de facto places that are meaningful in the Netherlands. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and so to go about representing uh, this country as being just about clogs and windmills, mm -hmm. that really has nothing to do with the reality of this place yeah. that, is, that, is, that belongs to all of us. Yeah. I can maybe pass on the word to, to my colleagues to think a little bit further about that. <laughs> As a Dutchman, there you go. 
Mm. <laughs> do you have some clogs? I don't have any clogs. <laughs> <laughs> I do like cheese and licorice. Um, yeah, there are some stereotypes that are typically associated with the Netherlands and I would reckon any other country in the world. And what we try to show with Roots Guide is that even though these stereotypes are part of what it means to be Dutch and to live in the Netherlands, they only tell a very small story of what Dutchness really is. And I mean, even saying Dutchness, you already put something within a box. And the, the beautiful thing about what we try to show with migration is, is that culture is not static, but it's continuously evolving. And if you would look at the Netherlands, say a thousand years ago, the typical Dutch people, they wouldn't recognize themselves with the Dutchman that you see today. And I think that is because of migration and that is because of the great influx of new ideas, new cultures, new foods, very important because even of cheese, you do get tired. Um, so I think that is a huge enrichment of, of our culture. And that's something worth celebrating. That really stands out. Um, so, 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 Rehab, can I ask you a, a question? It's, it feels weird to talk to a screen, but I'm, I'm just going to do it. <laughs> so, so, do it. Yeah, do yeah. So, so um, I, I was wondering how did you, because you are quite a, you're a team consisting of five people. How did you create the whole guide uh, together? Um, 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 yeah, I w how did you come together? Where where did it uh, initially start, or what was the first seed that was planted? Mm. And how well, did it come to life further? Of course. Mm -mm -mm. Well, it's um, it's funny because because we all come from from different professional backgrounds, uh, of course, different backgrounds, but different professional backgrounds. We have the academic, we have the storyteller, we have the scientist, we have the designer, and we have myself as the photographer. So what has connected us together is the idea of um, wanting to tell stories, that's one. And two, wanting to tell stories that are different than the ones that you're you're used to hearing whether on you know typical books or on social media or the media in general and uh, myself I'm uh, in my work I focus on identity a lot so that was the trigger of trying to look for uh, projects that tackle identity and tackle the or challenge actually the idea of linear or flattened identities so um, the seed that started all of this is a meeting with Ingi uh, in Morocco, uh, where um, just our love for telling stories and our need to tell stories that matter, that haven't been heard before, uh, has just connected us really um, to start this project. And soon after, uh, the rest of the amazing team members have joined in in order to tell the stories of uh, migrants and to challenge the what it means to be a migrant and to try to tell, as you said, a more truer version of uh, the Netherlands and the people who reside in it and who, who are connected to this land. Yeah, that's that's really uh, uh, um, it. Really struck me also, uh, as you said, like one of every two people or one of every four people is is a. Uh, what was it? So they've had one parent that's born outside of the Netherlands. Yeah. So, yeah. So, so, so I didn't raise my hand if, if, when I asked you guys to, if you identify as a migrant. And um, well, reading this book, it made me. It really made me aware of my position as a, as a. Well, I I guess you can. I would call myself a non-migrant, or I, I I don't know how to call it, but uh, it really made me aware of that, and. Um, uh, also, I believe I, we really are looking at migrants through a certain lens these days. And I, uh, I don't know, I just really appreciate the, the whole shifting and the whole, um, well, the shifting perspectives um, stuff, as, as, as you also uh, are, are pointing out. So uh, yeah, uh, I don't know, I, I just think it's very important. 
um, uh, even though I'm, I find it sometimes hard. What is my position and what is my, what? Um, so uh, next question, uh, 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 really important. What have you learned making this book? Uh, Ingi, yeah. Was that it? That was me, right? Yeah, you did. Yeah, you did. <laughs> um, so when I started Roots Guide, um, I just came back from Australia, and I had built my life there uh, as a scientist, but because of health issues, I was forced to return to the Netherlands, and yeah, my my world became very small then. Uh, because of my health, I couldn't leave the house practically anymore. Uh, so that was quite isolating. And I was used in Australia to be going to international conferences, had an international friend group, and traveled across the Pacific. Um, and with nice weather, that also helps. So coming back to the Netherlands was a bit of a shock, and particularly because I, I couldn't really move. Um, so, yeah, it was pretty bleak at that time. But uh, yeah, then Ingi and Rahab, they went out through the Netherlands, throughout the Netherlands, and they came back with, uh, with told and visual stories of all these people from diverse migration backgrounds. And the beautiful thing about those stories was not only the diversity, but also the similarities that they had. So people that you would never think would have anything in common, they would go through something very similar in their life, whether it was hardship or success or love. Um, they all had their own struggles, their own hardships, and they dealt with that in their own way. And that, in a way, gave me the courage and the strength to really... Um, yeah, battle for myself and uh, uh, yeah, and, and to really keep going. Um, so for me, it's been absolutely pivotal to be part of this project. It changed my life. And I am a microbiologist by trade. So, I, so humans are like extremely large organisms for me that are not very interesting. <laughs> but during this Brute Sky journey, like I got significant insights in the population population dynamics of humanity as well. And it's quite interesting that we are, like the thing that really distinguishes us as homo sapiens to the other organisms on the planet is that we are infatuated by fiction. We tell stories practically every waking moment that we have. Like practically everything that we do is stories, right? Money, borders, money, yeah. identity. Like it's all it's all stories. If all you also if all humanity would leave the earth, only the things that are left and have meaning, that's reality. But all our concepts, that's just fiction. And that's what I think is the power of storytelling as well. It really can bind us all together because it's the success of humanity, is that we can create the, those fictions together to believe in something bigger than the individual themselves. And um yeah, the current trend is a bit more towards individualism worldwide, which I think is a shame because I think if we really take the time to listen to each other, um, as we have tried to do with Roots Guide, I think as humanity together, we can come to something very beautiful. So that's what I took away from Roots Guide. That's what I learned. That sounds life-changing. <laughs> it was, yeah. and it is. Yeah. And, and uh, uh, you, Ingi? I mean, I, I, I think it's an important question to ask all of you. Uh, maybe all of you want to say something about it. Honestly, I'm like, there's so much that we've learned. I think that's one thing that we have spoken through all these years is that we are here to understand other people, listen to other people's stories, to understand their world and getting to know them better. But ultimately what happens when you listen to other people's stories, you actually get to know yourself much better. Right? Because when you listen to people's stories and you have a reaction to that story, it says everything about you and actually not about the storyteller. And that's what Roots Guide is all about. You know, it's going on that journey of, yes, being curious of others, but ultimately becoming curious of yourself. Who am I? Where do I belong? What is my purpose? And that's what we really want to invite everybody through because that has been our process. 
and we have been challenging each other. <laughs> We've been challenging ourselves. And sometimes there's tension, but we have grown so much. And I think one thing I have to say with these people that I work with for so many years now is that when we had tensions, that's probably when I felt the most seen by my peers. Mm. Because when you have tension and conflicts, you have to talk about what's real. Mm. And also you get real stories, right? What's going on with you? How can I see you? How can I let myself be seen? And I do think if we go through life having these invitations to others, but also ourselves, let ourselves be seen, I think there's nothing that can stop us. There's nothing we can't do of coming together and talk about polarization. I think we need that more than ever, not just in terms of migration. There's so many things right now that divides us, but we need more a compassionate heart to each other, listen to each other. And that's one thing I'm so, so grateful, not just for the core team, but also the supporting team that everybody had the courage to tell their stories and let themselves be seen. That sounds, uh, yeah, that <laughs> sounds beautiful. Uh, uh, and, 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 and I reckon that uh, because you all, I reckon you guys are all coming from different countries, aren't you? I mean, uh, Rehab is living in Egypt, is that correct? Um, were, was it like, because you all have your own part where you were verantwoordelijk, um, um, responsible. responsible for, did it go smoothly or were there like, like... Yeah, I, no I, problems. Yeah? No problems. No issues whatsoever. No, right but... Uh, yeah. I First, it is very easy, you know, it's no problem at all. No, but I, I, I work in a collective and, and, uh, and, and we all have our own, you know, our own stuff to work on. And, and sometimes it goes very smoothly and sometimes it goes very... Uh, you have big clashes and it, so, so I'm just curious about w were there some... Cha what were the challenges you faced? Um, was it hard that that the the distance? I mean, the fact uh, Rehab is living in <laughs> Egypt. Or what? Oh, of course, we had a lot of challenges. A lot, like distance. You know, coming from different disciplines. Yes, we all speak English, but when we come in from different disciplines, we speak different languages. Mm -hmm. That sometimes we think we agree, but we don't. When it's in, in practice, sometimes we don't think we agree, but actually, when we start practicing, we realize, oh no, it's actually we meant the same thing. But that's what I think has been really beautiful is that just because things are difficult, just because there's a conflict, it doesn't mean that you give up. Mm -hmm. That's actually when you push forward. That's when you have all the growing to do. And I love what Dan is saying is that if you don't have stories that makes you feel embarrassed or awkward, you're not doing any growing. Mm -hmm. And that's did I say that? Yes, <laughs> you, you, you say that. At least you told me that. So. <laughs> <laughs> and that's what I really appreciated through this journey is that I've learned so much about myself. I thought I was so open-minded, but uh. actually when you call yourself open-minded, you just blindfold yourself. Because there's always somebody who's going to come with a story that makes you go, oh, I didn't know that. And it really confronts you. Mm. And Rehab, what are your thoughts? Yeah, I'm laughing because, yeah, it, I mean... I totally agree with you, Ingi. The times that uh, we had conflicts, it, uh, it made us a lot stronger as a collective entity. And um, it, made us, it made us also um, elaborate further about what we're trying to tell, uh, which, which allows us to grow both personally and professionally. Uh, I remember there were many times that we would uh, we would, you know, this, like have like heated, you know, discussions about something. And w as we try to explain ourselves, we find ourselves actually agreeing on what we're trying to tell, but we're just speaking different languages, um, which is which is amazing. I mean, thinking about how we have collaborated and how we're coming from different professional backgrounds, different disciplines, as you say, uh, it definitely comes with a lot of a lot of challenges to elaborate and to clearly explain your process but also coming together to create this you know you know to create this process of both um, factual and also creative you know creative material it's very difficult you know um, especially having an academic and a, sci a scientist with us they they only work with you know with facts uh, Ingi and I, we we work, you know, randomly because we're just we want to we want to be creative. We want to to do something with the stories to make it um, or to give it justice to to show how beautiful it is in you know different ways, whether visually or in written form or spoken form. And having Megan and, and Dan with us has 
has created this balance in, in telling the stories to make sure that it's also practical for people to, to understand and also uh, work with these stories in order to grow like we have grown uh, during this process. Well, I'm, I'm really glad you, you guys all uh, saw uh, conflict as, a, as an invitation to, to grow. I mean, that's, that's, that's what it is in the end, right? Um, so uh, yeah, well, thank you for the for the for the quick talk. And I'm going to hand the the microphone to Ingi and Megan, who are going to tell us um, well something about what you can actually experience when you are reading uh, the book, which is also important. Um, so uh, they are going to give you a quick uh, teaser. So uh, yeah. Okay, so we're now going to give you a little bit of introduction. What is Roots Guide? We say an atypical guidebook. So Roots Guide is divided into 11 roots, and each root poses questions. Questions like, where do I belong? What if I had to leave, or what are my pr privileges? And these are all different questions that people with migration background often are faced with. And each root have four steps. Reflect connect, explore, and share. And this four-step journey is what we're going to give you a little bit of an introduction to right now. So are you ready? <laughs> Great. All right, let's go. So reflect. Each route invites you to reflect on a series of questions, to ask yourself, what brought me to my point in my life right here and right now? And you can use these questions to you know, write on your own, reflect, think, about who you are. Or you can use them as a conversation starter with your loved ones or with a complete stranger. So what we're gonna invite you tonight is to actually turn to a person, preferably somebody that you don't know, and ask this question. And if we can get the next question up. Yes. How have you made space for people who are different from you and for places that are unfamiliar? So how have you made space for people in your lives that are different from you? including places. So I'm going to give you a few minutes now. Just turn to the person that you maybe don't know and reflect for a few minutes. Okay, I know that this might be not a lot of time. I love the energy that I'm feeling in this room right now. And if I can have everybody's attention again. Okay. This is exactly what we want with the reflection questions. So whether you're reflecting on your own or using as a conversation started with somebody, this is the energy they want. How do we connect with other people? 
What brought you to your point in your life right here and right now? And once you got some chance to reflect on the theme of the chapter of the root, we will then go to connect. We will invite you to connect with one of our 34 guides who will tell their stories and share their roots and roots and what brought them to their point in life. And to give a little bit teaser, we have two wonderful guys here today who's going to read a little bit of excerpt from their story. And the first one we're going to introduce is Jennifer Tosh. The Roots Guide is in Dutch. There are a handful of stories that are actually written in English because we'd like the people to have their authentic voice in their book. So Jennifer, I'm going to give the floor to you. Give a round of applause for Jennifer. Should I stand? Oh my. This is great. I have a stage and a mic, and I feel fabulous today. How's everybody? <laughs> I'll sit down. Uh, I'm a natural actress, so you have to forgive me. I'm going to put my glasses on, otherwise I will not be able to read my story. And I also have to ask for forgiveness because my voice is not its usual. I'm a bit of allergies. I know I don't have COVID. I've been tested, so I can assure you of that. But... Um, Let's take the journey then together. I do need someone to be a timekeeper though, because I can talk for a very long time. So five, is it five minutes? Maybe I can get somebody to give me the, you'll call out <laughs> if I start to go on too long. My mother is in a coma. I know time is short. So I decided to just go ahead and call the phone number I had received from my mother's best friend, also from Suriname. I had asked her to help me by bring, going to the last known address I had known for my mother's family. I didn't know anyone in my mother's family. A woman answers the phone. Hi, I said. This is Jennifer Tosh, the daughter of Cecilia. She starts screaming, the woman on the other end of the phone. I hear people talking to each other on the other side of the line. Soon after, someone picks up the phone again. Hello, Jennifer? I hear a male voice say. He said, yes. I said, yes, this is Jennifer. He said, this is your brother, Glenn. The important point is I grew up as an only child. I'm so happy to hear from you. I've been looking for you and my mother for so long. I said, you mean you're my mother's brother? I reply, no, he says, I'm your brother. I keep trying to correct him. You mean you're my mother's brother, but there's clearly a language barrier. I speak no Dutch at this time. He's in Suriname, and he replies again, no, I'm your brother. We have the same mother. His words hung in the air as I'm trying to process what he's saying. My mind is racing for the, any memory that would validate his claim. My mother never told me she had any other children. He asked me if, I can, if he can talk to our mother. I tell him she's in a coma and isn't able to respond. He says, I don't care. I just need to talk to her to, for her to hear my voice. I pause. Carefully, I hold the phone to her ear. I can hear him crying and gently speaking to her, trying to express a lifetime of hopes and dreams of one day having had this moment. Hours later, she makes her transition and passes away. The moment is surreal. Call it serendipity, call it fate or destiny. In spite of a myriad of emotions from confusion, anger, sadness, I'm grateful. We're grateful that we found each other. Shortly after, I've been also reunited with my father, who I had not seen for over 20 years. From that moment on, everything in my life changes. I feel a combination of deep sorrow and grief about my mother's passing, and on the other hand, a sense of relief and joy that I have found my family. I've been searching for them, for my family's roots, ever since my mother became ill in 1989. I was born in the United States just before the start of the Civil Rights Movement. The decades-long struggle for black people to end legal se segregation and gain equal rights under the law. 
my parents had recently immigrated from New to New York City from like so many other Im immigrants from the they came from the from the Caribbean hoping to fulfill this ideal of the American dream. They both met in Aruba. They were born in Suriname and never went back to their home countries of birth. And I've always wondered why. They divorced when I was five and my mother brought me and her, uh, she and I to California where, where I carried my mother's family name. But my, brother was, my mother was the only family that I actually knew growing up. Excuse me, my nose is running. My mother had only told me a few stories about Suriname. She worked for, some of you will be old enough to remember, Pan American Airways. So I grew up with many travel privileges. I discovered the world from a first class seat. We visited the Netherlands twice during my childhood. I knew she had lived here going to boarding school. She was the first class of the Koikskool, some of you will know, in 1948. But that's about it. I don't know what to extent she stayed connected with our family in the Netherlands or in Suriname, but growing up, I was caught between these two worlds. The one I was born into in the United States, where at times I felt like I didn't fit in, and the other, the roots in, my roots in Suriname. Though I didn't fully understand until much later, I felt disconnected from that part of my identity. I'm gonna fast forward to my journey here to the Netherlands. I got the opportunity to come to live here in 2012 as a student, an international exchange student. I think I'm gonna depart from the book because I know my story. And how I got to this point will take more than the five minutes that I have, so I'll let you read that in the book. But what's interesting is I came to deepen my understanding about this Dutch colonial heritage and how my roots in the US are connected to Suriname and connected to the Netherlands, where four generations of my family have lived here. And so when I went to a Dutch university as an international student with these very deep heritage and roots, all I was getting was this sort of glory story. Those of you from the Netherlands know what I mean, the glory of the golden age. And as a descendant of the history, having now been years into my own journey, I kept asking, how is it we can talk about being one of the 10 richest countries in the world without talking about how we became the richest country? The glory of the golden age didn't happen just by itself without war and invasion and exploitation and colonization of indigenous lands, its people, the resources, slavery. Well, I was told lots of different things like, well, slavery was not permitted in the Netherlands. Oh, and we don't do race. You Americans brought that with you. We are colorblind. We don't see color. And oh no, there was no black history here because, well, everything was in the colonies. This was just the Netherlands. So these ideas were very problematic to me. And after having gone through a summer school here, in Black Europe summer school, learning a lot of different stories like we're talking about today, is where I realized that there's a real gap. Something's missing. And one of the things I say is, if something's missing, if it doesn't exist, then that's what we do, is create it, right? That's what we've done, is create something that wasn't there. And after this very interesting journey that took a couple of years to develop, in 2013, I started Black Heritage Tours in Amsterdam. Because my story was missing, it was hidden. And my family had been here for four generations, also didn't identify, talk about identity and belonging, didn't feel like they belonged. So for me, it was something I had to, I had to do. Now I'm gonna jump to the end of this chapter. How many minutes do I have left? Mine is two, oh my God, oh my God, the, the pressure. Okay, because I think the end of the story, and if I cry, you'll know why when I get to the end of the story. Black Heritage Tours was born in 2013 on the 150th year of commemorating the legal abolition of slavery in the Dutch colonies. Later that year, I went to Suriname to continue my research on my family's history. I went to the plantations where my ancestors were born, where they lived as enslaved people, where they fought for their freedom 
and became free, purchased land that they once were enslaved on. And since starting the journey, I've written three books, co-written three books. I've started a foundation called Sites of Memory. And for the last 10 years, I've been traveling back and forth in time as a time traveler and a history teller. And what I love about the journey that this has been taking us on is that it's dynamic. It doesn't just end here. For five years, our lives continued. And what's rather surreal for me right now is that my father is making his transition as we speak. Tomorrow, I am getting on a plane to see him perhaps for the last time. So for me, this is a bittersweet story that I hope doesn't have an ending, but a continuation, as I know that all of our stories will continue. Thank you for letting me share mine with you. Thank you, Jennifer, for sharing your powerful story. And as very often when we hear stories, we react, we have an emotion. And that's also what Ruth invites you to do, is to pause after reading a story. You know, what am I feeling? And to help you, we also have something called an emotional wheel. So I will invite you now to take a minute and look at the emotional wheel and think, what emotion came into my mind when I heard Jennifer's story? So hopeful, frustrated, powerless, inspired. And let that sit with you for a moment. Because what you're feeling will reveal a small piece of who you are. OK. We're going to invite Funda to come and share her story. Give Funda a round of applause. I go there, but maybe the water. Yes, here. Perfect. I have to sit back. Thank you. Thank you for sharing your story. Thank you, really. We are moved, I think. My story is in Dutch because my almost. Mother language is Turkish, but yes, I have to indeed. But it's um, it's almost my father's language. <laughs> ik weet niet waarom mijn moeder huilt. Het is allemaal zo raar. Ik heb heel even in haar jurk geschuild en toen steelde ze mijn haar. In het vliegtuig zei ze ook niet veel. Het was zo'n prachtig luchtkasteel. En we krijgen televisie daar. En we, zitten, we zien papa heel het jaar. Ik ben al tien keer in de lift geweest. En ik wil het nog wel een keer. Je stapt erin. Het is een heel vreemd beest. Het gaat alleen maar op en neer. We reden gisteren naar het nieuwe strand. De zee is grijs in Nederland. Ik weet soms niet meer hoe het vroeger rook... Alleen wanneer mijn moeder kookt. Ik weet niet waarom mijn moeder huilt. En nu huil ik met haar mee. Waarom hebben we van land geruild? Ik mis mijn oma's thee. En de mensen zijn hier groot en blond. Vreemde woorden uit hun mond. Papa eit soms even mama's rug. In de zomer gaan we terug. En dat zei papa ieder jaar. Dit naar aanleiding, dat heb ik geschreven in een voorstelling van mij. Ik had zelf gemaakt voorstellingen, avondvullende voorstellingen als theatermaker. Het plan was om nooit te blijven, maar dat deden we wel. Ik was zeven toen we naar Nederland kwamen. We kenden de taal niet, we waren ineens erg dom. De kinderen zongen liedjes over ons die we niet begrepen. Maar we voelden dat ze niet leuk waren. Na drie maanden wilden we weer terug naar Turkije. Mijn ouders zijn naar Nederland gekomen om te werken. 
te sparen en daarna weer terug te gaan. Even doorbijten, dachten we allemaal. En dan weer naar Turkije. Maar met een enkel inkomen en zes kinderen konden we geen cent sparen. Bovendien wilde mijn vader dat we de basisschool zouden afmaken hier in Nederland. En daarna alleen nog even misschien de middelbare school. En daarna de universiteit misschien in Turkije. Hij heeft ons altijd aangemoedigd de hoogste opleiding te volgen. Hij vond het belangrijk dat we het beste van de twee culturen meekregen. Toen we een keer teruggingen naar Turkije moesten we daar weer wennen. De schoolcultuur was totaal anders. We misten patat met mayo, drop en fietsen. In die paar jaar tijd zijn we meer aan Nederland gehecht geraakt dan we toen dachten. Dus twee werelden leven heeft veel invloed gehad op de keuzes die ik gemaakt heb van partners tot carrière. Ik had een diploma nodig waarmee ik zowel in Nederland als in Turkije een baan kon krijgen. Want we zouden altijd misschien voorgoed teruggaan. En onze terugkeer naar Turkije werd uitgesteld, uitgesteld, uitgesteld. Tegen de tijd dat ik 18 was, wilde ik niet meer terug. Wij zijn blijvers. Mijn nieuwe thuisland is erg filosofisch, merkte ik in die loop der jaren. Iedereen vroeg mij altijd, waar kom je vandaan? Waarom ben je hier? Uh, ga je nog terug? Ik stel mezelf vaak dezelfde vragen. Alleen vervang ik de laatste vraag door, waar wil ik naartoe? Dan Istanbul, 2007. Mijn taxi wordt aangereden door een Audi. Ik herinner me alleen een gigantische klap. Dan pijn, overal, behalve in mijn benen. Op de intensive care hoor ik dat ik nooit meer zal lopen. In paniek lig ik op bed. Mijn lichaam voelt als een blok beton. Er zit geen beweging of gevoel in mijn benen, afgezien van een vernietigende pijn. Mijn benen voelen ongemakkelijk, uit elkaar gespreid. Maar als ik de deken opdeel, zie ik dat ze kaarsrecht en perfect bij elkaar liggen. Ik moet mijn handicap zo snel mogelijk accepteren, wordt me verteld. Ik zeg tegen mezelf, ik heb een keuze. Want als ik als een bejaarde van achter de geranius uit het raam ga staren, of mezelf uitdagen, en dat is dus de keuze om me door, door anderen te laten ook uitdagen... En bezorgd dacht ik steeds aan mijn toekomst, mijn werk, mijn kinderen, mijn man, mijn relatie, tot en met mijn seksualiteit. Maar mijn vechtlust is groot. Ik ben geen patiënt, maar een regisseur van mijn eigen revalidatie. Zes jaar na mijn ongeluk weer een jump, krijg ik een soort van een depressie. Dankzij het fietsen kom ik op het idee om met een handbike te fietsen van Nederland naar Turkije. Na een maandenlange training en organisatie fiets ik in 2014 met de handbike van Amsterdam naar Istanbul. Ik wil iets doen om zowel de generatie van mijn ouders te eren als 50 jaar Turkse arbeidsmigratie naar Nederland daarvoor. Ik ben drie maanden onderweg voor de circa 4000 kilometer lange reis. Het levert veel aandacht voor gezondheid en de gehandicapte sport op en zo ben ik toch weer op reis. Waarom luisteren we toch naar het stemmetje in ons hoofd dat zegt nee, nee, later, ik heb het te druk, niet nu, misschien later, of wacht tot de kinderen groot zijn. Uh, nee, dan ben ik misschien te oud. Maar ik ben een optimist. Eerst dacht ik nooit meer te kunnen acteren en nu schrijf ik mijn eigen shows en kan ik eindelijk authentieke rollen spelen. Het heeft me zelfvertrouwen teruggegeven. Ik gebruik humor niet alleen om mensen te laten lachen, maar ook zodat ze zich gemakkelijk voelen met mijn handicap of dat ik Turks ben. Ik hou van denken en lachen. Humor brengt al mijn werelden samen. En het grappige is, dames en heren, mij werd de hele tijd gevraagd, waar kom je vandaan? Waarom ben je hier? Maar na mijn ongeluk werd me nooit meer gevraagd waar ik vandaan kom. En zo heette de titel van mijn boek, Niemand vraagt me waar ik vandaan kom sinds ik in een rolstoel zit. Nou, dan heeft het dus toch nog zin gehad. Hé, hey, wat een cadeau. Thank you. 
Ik wil even, even complimenten voor dit team. Zij hebben al misschien met elkaar gequarreld, et cetera, et cetera. Ik weet niet of ik de enige ben. Ik weet niet of jij ook die ervaring hebt. Maar wat hebben zij ook weer een geduld met ons gehad? Voor het uitwerken van onze lange, 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 lange verhalen. Super lange gesprekken. En toch zoiets moois gemaakt. Ik hoop echt heel veel succes. Dank jullie wel. Thank you, Funda. And it's been our pleasure and our privilege. So also for Funda, I would like to just take a moment to pause. And again, think a little bit of what did you feel when you heard Funda's story? <laughs> and with that, I'm going to hand over to Megan to explore. Thanks, Ingi. All right, everyone. So we've had the chance now to uh, engage with the reflect question. Yeah, we had a little moment to warm up, to prime ourselves, then to engage with a set of stories, beautiful stories. And thank you so much to Jennifer and to Funda for what you gave to us this evening. We had this chance then to, to engage with these stories, to, to empathize, to connect. And now we're in the phase. And there's Lana Mee over there in the... Hi, Lanami. Uh, we had the chance now to, to engage with both reflect and connect, and now we're going to go into the third phase, which is explore. And in this phase, uh, we do uh, explore activities, and these are experiential learning activities that are designed to get Roots Guide users out into the world. Uh, they give us opportunities as users to explore, to experiment, and to apply our insights that are gathered through these reflect questions and our connect stories um, in, and in order to, 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 to bring it into being, right? So to take it from our heads and from our hearts into our hands and into our feet and into the places in which we uh, are living and being. Now, users uh, in the guidebook have the opportunity to choose from a range of different kinds of activities, activities that are orientated towards people who are more inspired to uh, do things with their hands or do things uh, that are more uh, cognitively focused or things that are more spiritual or philosophically engaged. Um, and so we, we're trying to bring in different kinds of learning and different kinds of making sense of the world in these activities. So since we don't have a huge amount of time together this evening, uh, I do want to give you a little bit of a taste of what an explore activity is like. So instead of all of us going out tonight and going into the streets of Amsterdam and doing something really cool, we're going to do it with our heads. We're going to do it in our minds. We're going to visualize something. Okay? So um, when we are done with our little visualization, I don't know how much time we have. I'm going to turn to Ingi, our timekeeper. Probably not too much, but maybe, a, yeah. Okay, we'll see what we can do. Uh, but I want you to visualize with me. Now, what that means is I want to invite you to uh, get comfy in your chair. Yeah, get comfy in your chair. If you feel like it, you're welcome to close your eyes or to just kind of gaze softly at a place that feels good in this space. Okay? And I want you to travel along with me and, uh, and see what comes. Okay? All right. So, now in the reflect question that we worked with earlier, you were considering how have you made space in your life for people who are different from you and for places that were unfamiliar. Then you had the opportunity to connect with these, with these stories. And now I want you to consider for a moment what memories, what sensations, what feelings emerged for you in those reflect and connect moments. Now I want to invite you to imagine that you're going to host a dinner party for a handful of people this weekend. The people that you invite are different from the folks in your usual circles of friends and family. Maybe they come from a part of town or a place in the world that you're not familiar with. Maybe they have talents, knowledge, skills, uh, perspectives, or life experience that you're really just curious about. Maybe they're people that you study or you work with. Maybe they're your neighbors. Maybe they're people you've encountered in the streets, in the park, the market, an event, cafe, shops. And you'd like to get to know them, or perhaps you'd like to know them a little better. So who comes to mind and why? Now, you have some of these folks in your head now. Now, this is a potluck dinner that you're hosting. So everybody that's invited uh, is going to bring a dish of something that they've prepared. So is there a theme that you would like to use to inspire people to bring specific kinds of food 
and of course, the stories that inevitably come with them. What theme will you choose? Would you like your guests to bring with them their favorite childhood dish? Or how about their favorite comfort food or some kind of street food that they love? Maybe it's some kind of dish that they eat during a favorite holiday period or a special event. Okay, so you have this in your head, who's coming, what's the theme? Now you figure out what you want to have. Now it's time to think about what you want your guests to get out of that experience. How do you want them to feel during and after the dinner together? Consider how you'd arrange and even decorate your place to help make that possible. How would you welcome and introduce them to one another? What would your guests need to feel comfortable? When everyone's arrived and it's time to eat, I want you now to invite your guests to the table. And it's full of the food that everyone's brought. Now, encourage every guest to share something about the dish that they've brought with them. And don't forget you too. So think for a moment about what dish you would contribute to the dinner as well. Now, go around the group and one by one share. What's the dish that you brought? What's it called? What are the kinds of rituals or traditions associated with eating it? When is it eaten? Where is it eaten? How is it eaten? With whom? Now, how about a memory of eating that dish? And how about telling a story or a short anecdote about the person who first cooked that dish for you? Once everyone's had a chance to share, it's finally time to eat. And now while you're eating, I want you to look around and look at the faces. What are, what are the facial expressions as people are eating and sharing and, and engaging with each other? What are the gestures that are being used around the table? Now the dinner's wrapping up and it's time for your guests to head home. As you close the door to your last guest after they've left, what do you feel? What did you get from the experience? So I invite you now to slowly leave the dinner party in your mind and to come back into this space here in Pakaj des Weicher. Um, and if you need to, go ahead, open your eyes, and do a little stretch to be present again with us. And I'd like to give you just a very few seconds to turn to a person next to you and share something about this dinner party that you've just created. So just very, very briefly, who's there? What's going on? Okay, so I'd like to invite you guys to come back. And my apologies, of course, time is flying and we don't have too much time, but now you know how to organize your dinner party and I'm definitely expecting you to do that this weekend. Yeah, and of course there are lots of people here that you can get familiar with. So after, after we wrap up here, we'll have drinks later and you can invite people for your dinner parties, okay? All right, so we're going to move on now to the final step, which is share. Sorry? And with this final step, share. What is it? In this moment, this is a space in which we're able to bring together what we've done with our reflect, our connect, and our explore steps. And we're given space within the guidebook to express ourselves. We've, we've brought on all of this great information, all of this knowledge, all of this experience, and it's finally a space in which we can dedicate our, our own perceptions uh, in the form of writing, collage, drawing, what have you. Yeah? So you have a space to, to, to create your own stories and then also to share them. So we don't want you to just keep it in the book. We want you to share with your friends, with your family. Take a photo of it, post it on social media. We have hashtags as well. <laughs> I'm just figuring out how those work. But, um, but yeah, so we can make use of these kinds of things. Um, so uh, in the spirit of the share step, what I'd like to invite you to do now is to step back and think about this brief experience that we've had together through these different steps. And I'd like to invite you to just 
think a little bit about what, what have you felt going through this very quick journey? Um, and I'll pass around the mic to anybody who feels willing and ready to share uh, something that, that they've experienced in these last minutes together. Anybody would like to share something? It's hard for me to see with the light. Anybody would like to share something? Like a bit scary, yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> It's a, it's a challenging question. It's yet to step back and say, well, what did I get from this? Yeah, please. Here. Thanks. So I'm normally never the person who raises the hand, <laughs> just to make this clear. <laughs> but, uh, but I actually felt inspired to do it. So thanks for that. I really felt connected to all the different stories. I, I think it's amazing the work that you've put into this. And um, yeah, I think it would be great if it also exists in English for... Uh, other people to explore everything but um, but yeah mainly what I felt was really calm actually and inspired and uh, yeah I think often I'm very hectic running through my life and it sort of was a pause so I really appreciated that thanks oh thank you so much for that that was lovely thank you lovely lovely <laughs> mm. I think we need to unfortunately we oh please yes wonderful please I was thinking because of what she said, but for me, I'm an immigrant, so I feel really connected with these stories because I think I don't belong here, but I also don't belong where I was born, so I saw where I belong, you know, like this this feeling of, of being here, but not really. But also, I think the way how they, the, the structure, how you go through these old steps, I, I never thought that way, you know, like you can really these questions make it to you, but also to someone else to try to find out more about you and your background, but also you can not feel alone because many people have the same feelings or, or also are also immigrants. For example, I imagine my daughter, that she is gonna be someone who father is Dutch, the mother is Peruvian, and she also have a lot of Peruvian background, you know, because we eat Peruvian food at home, we listen music, you know, so she is also kind of an immigrant in a way. So it's really nice and really, I'm really surprised. I'm I really, really looking forward to read the book. Yeah. Thank, you, thank you so much for that. Really appreciate it. For the sake of time, I realize that we need to head on to the next uh, part of our program, and it's a wonderful part of our program, uh, because we're able to bring a, a group of wonderful people up on stage, and I'm gonna hand it over to Ingi. I'm gonna hand it over to Matthijs. <laughs> I'll hand it over to somebody. Here we go. Well, yeah. yeah. Uh, so yeah, uh, uh, to me, it's, it's kind of uh, impressive to meet all the guides uh, whom stories I uh, read before I met them. Um, uh, so, th as you may or may not know, there are quite a few guides present here, and I'd like to welcome uh, a few on stage. Uh, uh, Claudius, um, uh, give them warm applause, of course. <laughs> Claudius, yes, please. Um, Marit, <laughs> Wendy, and Razan. And um, I'm just going to sit in the middle. Yeah. Uh, and Reza, ah, yeah, perfect. So, welcome, 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 welcome on stage. Um, so, um, uh, well, first question, uh, do you guys have mics? That's also important. <laughs> so, um, uh, what was the motivation for you guys to um, tell your story through Roots Guide? That's a good question. Well, if Ingi asks you something, it's hard to say no. She, she is the spider in the web, I heard. Uh, 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 sh like, she's connected to everyone, right? That's yeah. something I heard, uh, yeah. So, so that was your motivation to, no, no, you can't say of, no. Of, of course not, no, that was not the motivation. Actually, when she asked me if I wanted to share my story in the Roots Guide, my first reaction was like, I, I don't have a story to tell, so, no, nah, I don't think so. So then, but she um, introduced me to the art of storytelling. So I had to dive deep to figure out my story. And I said at first I wanted to be the story about my grandmother because she's the most important person in my life. She migrated from Indonesia to the Netherlands. So yeah, I found out I do have a story to tell. And it was really lovely to tell it and have the opportunity to share it. 
Yeah, and it, it, it's a it's a beautiful story. I mean, I mean, I thank you. Of course, read all of your stories. Uh, uh, does any of you have some other motivation? Um, I got hooked the same way um, <laughs> to the art of storytelling. Uh, I, I believe I followed the very first uh, Pocket Stories workshop where I learned through um, videos and, and, and photos um, to share um, parts and bits of my story and actually how to uh, combine all those bits into one whole story. Yeah. yeah and uh, I don't know if I may spoil this, but for your s story uh, specifically, it starts a very different from mine, and then in the end, you uh, you ask yourself questions about: uh, Do I want to do things the same as my dad? I, I, is that correct? If I state that? Uh, yes, yes, um, certainly. Um, I think for me, uh, growing up um, in two different countries, in Liberia and in Ivory Coast, and having this voice that has a label, which is that, but you cannot really see him. Mm. Um, and then finally getting to see him was, was, wasn't confrontational, but in some way it was looking at his choices. Mm. And then in the end of my, at the end of my story, you get to see that um, I got a daughter and then um, trying to uh, work around my career and, and, and my, my schooling, uh, trying to create um, a better situation for myself and her, and figuring out what are the choices that comes along and what will be the choice that is best to create that future, but would I also coincide with her being around? Yes. Yeah, well, that was something I I certainly could relate to. So so um, that really struck uh, home or something. Um, um, I, I, I'm curious, d did you guys learn anything or, or take away anything from the whole experience of this? process. I think what is most important is that they somehow untangled all the things that were in my head. There were so many stories and so were so many lines and things that I wanted to tell people about, but I didn't know where to start. So that's basically what they did. They helped me to compose a story about me, about this time, this particular stage in my life, and then be able to continue from that experience and build. So that's kind of what I learned. And what I also said to Megan in an interview, because it's, um, they are with me like for many years already. So the story kind of evolved from being a very large, like maybe, 10 or 12 pages of text towards a very compressed story like this. So it, it's like rewritten, rewritten, rewritten towards like some basic themes that kind of are, yeah, something that is, is in everybody of us. And for me, it was really funny because I said to her, it's a privilege because I am able to, uh, know myself more and have my own biography in a way and I'm not dead. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. <laughs> and yeah. Uh, uh, so uh, uh, what what do you guys hope uh, readers will get out of Roots Guide? For me, um, <laughs> it was also like a, a journey of self-discovery and, um, or better said, a comfort-disrupting uh, venture. Um, <laughs> I, I, o I also, like, <laughs> as you said, when I was first invited by In uh, Ingi to share my story, my first reaction was, of course, like, uh, crump in my stomach and immediately said, okay, but why on earth uh, would this story be interested, interesting to anyone <laughs> in, this, in this world? Like, uh, like uh, it was a, a, like a direct no, but uh, she doesn't talk for take no for an answer, <laughs> and, <laughs> and uh, like uh, yeah, it's just like how I learned um, that um, yeah, to be a person is actually to have a story to tell. To tell, a story is much more than a progression of events that leads to an outcome. It's not only a timeline; it's accumulation of key moments, lessons learned, motivation, frustrations, and successes. And uh, like we. 
I and we, uh, I guess we hear a lot, um, uh, be yourself, just be who you are. Uh, I believe uh, the first step to becoming uh, who you are is to learn who you are. Self-knowledge is key. And uh, like uh, self-knowledge uh, can be developed. We are not born with this uh, skill. And uh, as Aristotle uh, once said, knowing yourself is the beginning of all wisdom. And in that sense, uh, this experience with the Roots Guide um, uh, has brought me loads and loads of wisdom for which I am truly, like, immensely grateful. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's, that's, yeah, that's really... So it doesn't only do something for the reader, as I also already learned stuff reading it, but also for the people who shared their stories and uh, so... Still, so far, only benefits. Yeah. So, if if I may share one last uh, yes. thought uh, uh, regarding, like, uh, what do, do I hope readers to uh, to get out of Roots Guide? Um, yeah, experience shows uh, uh, that in order to make progress in life, we have to embrace uh, discomfort and accept it. It's it's part of growth. Uh, so, get comfortable with being uncomfortable. Uh, that may sound simple, but by no means it's easy. I hope that if parts of this book make you uncomfortable, you can sit with that discomfort for a while to see if it has anything else to offer you, because it did offer me a lot. If I can add to that, uh, Matthijs. Yes, yes. Um, when you asked the question, what was the motivation that actually um, moved you to tell your story? Um, I, uh, what I said was the truth, but it was, it was the half truth. Um, I was motivated also mainly by the fact that my story was going to be uh, co covered by somebody. And why is that? It's because I, I was used to, no matter where I went, like you said, people asking you, where are you from? Who are you? Um, I was always the center of attention. Um, people wanted to know who I am and uh, what I think. And I think um, the major contribution to uh, what Roots could have done is the transformation that I went through uh, personally, which was to take the focus from me to others. And I remember this line that um, from the very first uh, workshop, Ingi and I uh, said it to each other, that it, they, or actually you said it, the intensity of our stories differs, but it still matters. Um, hearing from um, one of the participants was, was, was a girl who, she was Russian, but she uh, was uh, in a relationship with a guy who was from Portugal, and they're in the Netherlands. I'm like, how do we end up together? How, how does that journey go? And I think that's, that's when you, um, the key concept that I want and perspective that I want to show through my story and with all the many facets that it has is that um, your story matter. We are walking stories. Um, people are stories. And from curiosity, uh, we want to hear these stories. And I just wrote something very, very short to, yeah, to share. Please share it. Um, so, what I say is that uh, what, I, what I say is, is it doesn't really matter what 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 camp you belong to, so you can be Dutch or you can say I'm an immigrant or not. Um, whether you are Dutch from Leeuwarden or, or from Hoes, or you are a refugee from Syria or Eritrea, you carry a story worth hearing, and this matters because it is only when you acknowledge your personal story that you look for the same in others. Um, no no better name could could have been given to this venture, Rules Guide, because it is really a guide that gives tools to access the richness, the richness of stories. It gives you the, the ability to tap into human perseverance, co commitment, and identity. And that's, for me, the worth that I got from this whole journey. Thank you, Ingi, for being part of this. <clears throat> really um, profound words from all of you. Um, uh, I, I would like to... Um, as there most certainly are questions from the audience right now, I'd like to open up the floor and um, see if anybody has anything to ask to the creators or the guides that are sitting here. So um, oh, should I give the... Yes, I should do it. Um, can I have... I'm going to walk around. Switch mic. <coughs> so uh, are there any questions? Don't feel obliged, but do feel invited. Yes? <coughs> now, maybe a quick question around the uh, product itself. I mean, the book, uh, it's a book, of course, and uh, 
but uh, will uh, will it be um, produced in other means or other ways? Because there are so many ways which you can navigate, I guess, the routes and uh, maybe a type of a website or something. I'm wondering sort of if there will be future iterations of the book, opening it up to other ways of navigating it. Uh, thanks for that, Edward. Um, yes, so so we're interested in uh, hmm. we are interested in, in 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 first in thinking about how we can bring uh, this this experience this this uh, model into other countries uh, throughout Europe because we think that it's a it's a really valuable tool uh, that we think uh, could be really beneficial in in a lot of places to get people to think. Uh, about uh, about migration in different ways. So this is one of the first steps that we're interested in taking. But we're also very interested in exploring the ways in which we can use this uh, guidebook, not just um, uh, among um, people from throughout the Netherlands, um, as, you know, people people buying it uh, as as a normal uh, sort of sort of experience, a guidebook experience. But we're also thinking about how we can uh, encourage its use uh, in courses uh, for for people who are coming into the Netherlands, newcomers, um, for uh, ways in which they can get to know this country uh, through stories that might resonate more thoroughly uh, with their own lives. Uh, so this is one thing that we're thinking about. So being part of uh, in brokering uh, courses. Uh, we're getting in touch with Gemeente throughout the throughout the country in order to see how that might actually be possible. So this is something that we're exploring, and we're also uh, involved in an, in another initiative uh, called Migrant Tour, uh, which is which is somewhat similar, which is invol involving guided walking tours uh, of places through the eyes of people with migration and refugee backgrounds. So uh, we think that we can bring in. Uh, uh, many of these different elements from the Roots Guide uh, into these guided walking tours in order to foster more uh, interactive uh, and empathic engagement with the places that are meaningful to people with refugee and migration backgrounds. Do you guys want to add anything? No? It never stops. Yeah. Matthijs, can I add something? Uh, yeah. I, I sure. suddenly realized that this in front of us is a little piece of hope. This book is for me means hope. This is about feelings, about meaning. So it's for everybody. It should be for everybody here in Netherlands or in the whole world to have like a space, have a place and be yourself and be able to express yourself. So this is very hopeful for me. Wow. Uh, Thank you. Uh, there's another <coughs> question. Thank you. Yeah, I have a question. Uh, this is the Roots Guide in Netherlands, but um, uh, I'm just wondering, is it uh, the Roots Guide in Netherlands because it is dealing with people migrating to Netherlands? And are you then also going to make Roots Guides for other, con for other countries? Because I think this is not a Roots Guide for Netherlands, it's a Roots Guide for for global people all around the world uh, 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 that have ended up here, but not necessarily have a, or yeah, what's 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 your yeah what's your view on that? Uh, what's the specific relation to the Netherlands, maybe then? The Dutch connection. Yeah. The Dutch connection. Good question. No, the reason why it's about the Netherlands is because all the people in the book have at one point called the Netherlands home, and it really talks about. Okay, the journey of coming to the Netherlands or moving within the Netherlands and their places that are meaningful to them. So how do they navigate their life here in this country? But we are wondering, how do we expand on this? Because people are coming from all corners of life, of corners of life, corners of the world. And it does talk about humanity, all the things that we humans are find meaningful. So there are talks and works about an English edition um, that we are thinking about how do who do we target with the English version, and that won't necessarily be a Dutch audience only, but that is to to be discussed. Yes. So uh, yeah, so so in uh, according or time wise, we we need to go on. Uh, I I want you to give a warm, very very warm applause to the guides here, <laughs> for whom. Five minutes of questions is yeah thank you for for whom five minutes of questions is is actually too short. 
so I would definitely suggest uh, tr and try to read the book because you can dive in their stories much, much more and much, much longer. Um, so now I'm going to give the stage to uh, Megan, who's going to say some quick words of gratitude. She's she looks puzzled, so maybe she's not. Yeah. <laughs> No, I'm just absolutely full of gratitude. <laughs> Do you guys know how many people have been involved in the Roots Guide project since it began? Guess. 100. No. More. 250. Actually, more than 250. It's amazing. We have had, um, we have been able to benefit from the generous support and astounding creativity of, of, of our guides, many of whom you've had a chance to meet today, and who are many of whom are also in the audience, and I, and I really heartily encourage you to get to know them uh, after, in, in drinks afterwards. Our guides, our volunteers, our donors uh, from Forte Kunst and others beyond that, uh, our beta testers, because we didn't just put this out there, we have prototyped it really prototyped this. Um, we've benefited so much from the support of our colleagues, from our friends, from our neighbors, from our families over these last years, and we are deeply grateful, deeply grateful. And we also want to put out a very special thanks uh, to Esmurait Dawa Deckers. Uh, she has gone above and beyond in her support uh, throughout the journey of the Ruth's Guide. So thank you very much, Esmurait. I have a lot of people to thank. And unfortunately, I don't have all the time in the world to do it. So, but what I do really want to do is to thank uh, those who were in our supporting team. And I'm going to, to list their names. Christina Mao Hansen. <laughs> Fiona Haas, who's joining us uh, via Zoom today. Anne Kessels. We're going to have a lot, so maybe we hold the applause until the end. Uh, Amber Mulder, Cassandra Benyanda, uh, Sarah Walter, Muriel Van Winkel, Mesh Gautam, Alejandra Guijo Bermejo, Mega Nanda, Zakaria Bakarat, Chiara Pizza, Pizzi, Pizzi excuse me, uh, Dan Flynn, I like pizza, <laughs> Oscar Bothas Iglesias, that's my partner, by the way, uh, Rasan Damlaki, Lai Quinn Ye, Wendy de Jong, Marit Schakel, Claudio, Claudius McGill, Mila Eberhardt, Batu Lakmush, Ala Kalaji, and Abel Fernando. So one more person to also thank, uh, our, our text editor, uh, Marianne Vinia. In addition to these wonderful folks, we also have benefited very much uh, from, from our generous partners and donors. Uh, we'd like to thank uh, our, the National Geographic Society for their support over these last years for making the Roots Guide possible. Wageningen University in Research, that's where I work. Boomerang Agency, the Bank Giro Loterij Fonds, the European Cultural Foundation, Nederlandse Koninklijk, uh, uh, Ambassade Cairo, Dutch Culture, Wij doen mij, and Alert Jongere Fonds. Thank you very, very much for this opportunity, for supporting us over these last years. Uh, now we can applaud. <laughs> <laughs> and with that, I'd like to pass the word to Ingi, who will wrap up this session uh, with the, the generous, generous thanks to our amazing guy. So I'm going to ask you to direct uh, your eyes towards the screen. You're here. Maybe. Marit. Wendy and Sylvia. Mart. Jennifer. 
Luisa. Sami. Nils. Na. Rita. Jan. Barbara. Lei. Roderick. Kobi. Masoud. Stephen. Sarah. Antis. Hank. Marina. Jill. Falter. Rasan. Mila. Hans. Claudius. Julia. Laura. Alinda. Liana. Nucky. Funda. Alina. Abel. Carmen. <coughs> Stephen. Amber. And Abdul. From the bottom of our hearts, we from the Rootsky team, thank you for taking us on a vast and deep journey to discover how you navigated love, loss, success, and challenges here in the Netherlands. You have showed us that people with migration heritage come from all kinds of backgrounds with different levels of privilege. Above all, you have showed us they are all just humans searching for meaningful connections. To mark the end of our book launch, we want to celebrate your generosity and courage to share your stories with the world. Let them serve as a reminder that if we all share stories with each other, we will gain a more inclusive, meaningful, and fun world. I invite you to join me to applaud and celebrate the stories of our guides. Wow. Uh, that's already uh, the end. Uh, thank you very much for coming. Thank you very much for listening, for being attentive, for being present. Uh, it certainly was a journey already here, uh, or I at least felt that. Um, and um, if I may add one small thing, uh, I, as a, as, a, as a person who looks like he looks, and um, uh, I, 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 uh, I've been made aware of my uh, who I am uh, lately, um, and it's sometimes uh, it feels very humbling also to be here present amongst all these people, and um, it's it also feels like a burden sometimes, and I I, I sometimes lose the um, uh, the uh, the courage to to go into dialogue, um, and 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 this book really inspired me uh, to. Uh, it feels like an imperative to always seek dialogue, good nature dialogue, which is so important. And as Claudia said, like uh, the attention shifted from him towards others. Uh, I believe it's all about the, uh, if I may say this from my position, but I, feel, I believe it's all about the connection and that we must keep looking for each other, keep looking each other in the eye and say, hey, who are you? What's your story? And, and, and tell me, even though I may not even understand it, but just just tell me. Um, and uh, yeah, indeed, that feels awkward sometimes for me. And uh, but that's good because that's there lies the opportunity to grow. So well, this was a, I don't know I didn't I didn't plan this saying <laughs> saying this, but uh, I just wanted to add this. So now uh, I I just want to ask one three more questions, quick questions. I want you to raise your hand if you discovered something new about yourself or about anyone else. Raise your hand if you're eager to explore the Netherlands. Uh, 
through new lenses. <laughs> Certainly am. And uh, raise your hand if you're ready to join us for drinks downstairs. <laughs> yes. Thank you very much.